Hello friends. This video contains the scripture readings and a sermon message from Ash Wednesday. This past Wednesday was Ash Wednesday and we didn't have our technical things worked out right with our camera, so I was unable to record the video. This is a substitute for those of you who want to go back a few days in time and observe Ash Wednesday as the beginning of Lent. The first reading is from the book of Joel. Blow the trumpet in Zion, sound the alarm on my holy mountain, let all the inhabitants of the land tremble, for the day of the Lord is coming, it is near. A day of darkness and gloom, a day of clouds and thick darkness. Like blackness spread upon the mountains, a great and powerful army comes. Their like has never been from of old, nor will be again after them in ages to come. Yet even now, says the Lord, return to me with all your heart, with fasting, with weeping, and with mourning. Rend your hearts and not your clothing. Return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love and relents from punishing. Who knows whether he will not turn and relent and leave a blessing behind him, a grain offering and a drink offering for the Lord your God. Blow the trumpet in Zion, sanctify a fast. Call a solemn assembly, gather the people, sanctify the congregation, assemble the aged, gather the children, even infants at the breast. Let the bridegroom leave his room and, and the bride her canopy. Between the vestibule and the altar, let the priests, the ministers of the Lord, weep. Let them say, spare your people, O Lord, and do not make your heritage a mockery, a byword among the nations. Why should it be said among the peoples, where is their God? The word of the Lord. This is a reading from Paul's letter to the church in Corinth, 2 Corinthians. We entreat you on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. For our sake he made him to be sin who knew no sin, so that we in him might become the righteousness of God. As we work together with him, we urge you also not to accept the grace of God in vain, for he says, at an acceptable time I have listened to you, and on the day of salvation I have helped you. See, now is an acceptable time. See, now is the day of salvation. We are putting no obstacle in anyone's way so that no fault may be found with our ministry. But as servants of God, we have commended ourselves in every way, through great endurance, in afflictions, hardships, calamities, beatings, imprisonments, riots, labors, sleepless nights, hunger, by purity, knowledge, patience, kindliness, holiness of spirit, genuine love, truthful speech, and the power of God with the weapons of righteousness for the right hand and for the left, in honor and in dishonor, in ill repute and in good repute. We are treated as impostors and yet are true, as unknown and yet are well known, as dying and see we are alive, as punished and yet not killed, as sorrowful but always rejoicing, as poor yet making many rich, as having nothing and yet possessing everything. Dear friends, it is good to gather for worship on Ash Wednesday, a night when the church turns its attention toward Christ's journey to the cross. With Jesus, we follow the path that he trod through stories, through the liturgy, through scripture, and through the Lord's presence with us. Jesus, the Son of God, who John called the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the earth, faces the cross. 
where he took away the sin of the world. Lent places us at the last days of Jesus among his friends and among his disciples. Lent places Christ's anguish before us. Lent places each of us at the foot of the cross as Jesus accomplishes salvation for us. As the church began to observe the season of Lent, several patterns emerged that are still in practice today. The church calls Christians to make confession of sin during Lent and to repent from sin and turn again to Christ. Christ, of course, who takes away our sin. The church calls Christians to prayer, to meditation, to reflection on the Word of God, the Word on which our very lives depend, today and into eternity. The Church calls Christians to engage in a discipline such as fasting as a way to share Christ's journey and to feel more deeply part of his life and our life in him. The Church has called these things the disciplines of Lent or Lenten disciplines. The idea behind this is to reflect on the meaning of our baptism into Christ's death and resurrection. We remember how Jesus became flesh, how Jesus lived among us and died among us. In the words of the Apostle Paul, we remember how the immortal put on immortality. This is the miracle of our baptism and the grace of the Lord for us. Lenten disciplines help us to live this more deeply and live it together with one another, with others who make up the church, the body of Christ. Fasting is one way. Giving up something for Lent, too, is a common practice. Granted, giving up things is not easy for us. It's not in vogue, and we don't welcome sacrifice, especially in a culture that so easily measures us according to what we have. That fills us with desire for what we don't have. Giving up sacrifice can become a Lenten inconvenience rather than a discipline, and an inconvenience that we don't want to tolerate. I get that. I've advocated, along with many in the church, that instead of giving something up for Lent, we take something up. Take up a new spiritual practice. Take up advocacy on behalf of others. Take up healthy practices. The world, the world so loved by God that he sent Jesus, lifts many, many needs to our attention. Innocents die every day in war. At this very moment, when we gather for worship, people are being killed. Lord, have mercy, we pray. We can also take up the cause of refugees, especially from Afghanistan and today the Ukraine region. All of Eastern Europe is being affected, and we can help. Our church is there. We can advocate to our leaders, imploring diplomatic solutions and diplomatic force. We can advocate for policies that don't reward unjust acts. And we can sacrifice. The world, the world so loved by God that God sent Jesus, is in the midst of a climate crisis. We can take up the earth as a cause, practice responsible care of the earth and all its resources. We can advocate to our leaders for policies that reward responsible care of the natural world, the world so loved by God. If you wish to give up something, I have a suggestion. I mean, there are lots of things we could give up. Anything that keeps us from loving God and loving our neighbor is a good thing to give up. But I'd like to suggest what I think is an important thing for us to give up. It's Ash Wednesday. On Ash Wednesday, we gathered and people came forward to receive ashes on their forehead in the shape of a cross. And 
As those ashes were placed on their forehead, they heard these words, Remember that you are dust, and to dust you will return. Those words come from Genesis, spoken to Adam what we know as original sin set in. He was tempted, you'll remember, to eat a fruit and to become like God. God reminded Adam that he was dust, and to dust he would return. We remember, too, that we are mortal. We are dust of the earth, of the world, and we are mortal. In our baptism, God puts immortality on us, but we live in this body as dust of the earth, and we die in this body as dust. We die of the earth, returning to the earth as dust. I cannot begin to fathom just how many lives we've lost in the past two years to a pandemic. I've become, and I'm very sad to say, indifferent to the sickness and death around me each day, indifferent to people who are sick, indifferent to those who continue to suffer, known as COVID long haulers, indifferent to those who care for the sick in nursing homes and hospitals and clinics. I've become indifferent to the pain and grief and loss felt by so many. How many? As of yesterday, 950,785 people died in our country. Nearly one million. Just yesterday, 1,908 people died. Nearly 80 million people here have been sick from COVID. I'd like to give up my indifference to give up that indifference to death and sickness and suffering, for Lent at least. And I invite you to join me. I want to light a candle each day of Lent or burn a stick of incense, pausing to grieve the lives that we've lost, pausing to remember those who grieve loved ones and friends, the numbers are incalculable, and they grow by each moment. I want to light a candle each day of Lent or burn a stick of incense, pausing to remember those who are sick and who are suffering, pausing to remember those who care for them, who help them and love them. I want to pause and remember that I am dust, and to dust I will return. Remember that you are dust, and to dust you will return. As I remember my mortality, I will also remember the promise of the gospel, the good news of what Jesus did for us on the cross and what God did for us in Christ's resurrection. Hear these words of the New Testament. Paul wrote these to the church in Corinth. Lo, he writes, I will tell you a mystery. We will not all die, but we will be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye at the last trumpet. For the trumpet will sound and the dead will be raised imperishable. And we will be changed. For this perishable body must put on imperishability. And this mortal body must put on immortality. When the perishable puts on the imperishable and the mortal puts on immortality, then the saying that is written will be fulfilled. Death has been swallowed up in victory. Where, O oh death, is your victory? Where, O oh death, is your sting? The sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is the law. But 
thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen.